Hi guys, today I have a different video for you. I'm going to tell my personal story of how I got a graduate job in the UK as an international student. For those who don't know me, I'm Valeria and this is MindTheGrad. On this YouTube channel, I share tips and advice on studying and working in the UK. I work as an independent consultant for international students and I help them secure the first jobs in the UK. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss a new video from me. And also check out my Instagram page, where I share useful advice almost daily. But before becoming a career consultant, I actually worked in HR at JP Morgan in London for a few years. That was my first job out of university. So in this video I'm going to tell you exactly how I got this job with a visa sponsorship without having any relevant work experience. And I do hope that my video will be useful for you and also perhaps motivational in some way. Let's break it down by the years of university. I arrived to the UK back in 2011 as an international student and I started my course of bachelor's in economics and philosophy at the University of Nottingham. So in year one, I didn't do much in terms of my career development. I just tried to pass my courses. I didn't have any part-time jobs or positions of leaderships or responsibilities. I didn't really think about my future that much. But in the end of the year, I decided to create my CV and I realized it was looking quite poor. I only had high school staff from there. So in year two, when I returned for my second year of university at the University of Nottingham, I realized I need to get way more serious about my career plans. I decided to really build my profile, so I got a part-time job at the university as a student ambassador. Then I also got a position of responsibility, actually two of these. I became a treasurer at Philosophy Society and I became a social secretary at the Russian Society. So I had more stuff to put on my CV, I was getting more confident, gaining, gaining some skills. And around um, winter of my second year, I decided to apply for internships. Why did I do that? Because on my economics course, a lot of people were talking about doing internships at top companies like Deloitte or Morgan Stanley, and they were all getting different offers and interviews. And I realized, well, actually, I need that as well. I need to work at some cool company and that sounds great. That's what everyone is doing. So uh, I decided to go on websites of these companies and see what's on offer. I didn't have any strategy. I was just like, wow, trading sounds cool. Let's apply. Oh, wow, uh, finance department. Yeah, I could do that. Apply. So I didn't have any strategy. My CV was all over the place, but I was just applying for the sake of applying because I knew I needed something. As a result, obviously, I didn't get many interviews. Oh, I'm not lying. I didn't get any interviews and I was failing a lot at the stage where I had to do tests or pass the CV screening. And I'm honest now that I didn't have any clear strategy. I didn't know what I was doing. But I'm glad that I started applying in second year because at least I was familiar with the process. At least I was getting in the right mindset. I was understanding what kind of positions were out there, what companies were doing. Um, but I didn't succeed at all. I didn't get any internships or placements or experience opportunities. So in that summer, I returned back home, Not didn't stay in the UK because I didn't have any job. And I did an internship back home uh, in a publishing house. I was quite lucky to uh, get the support opportunity because actually I needed to add something to my CV apart from my part-time job and leadership experiences. In year three I returned back to Nottingham and that was a stressful year because I realized this is my final year of bachelor's. Some of my friends from my course already done internships at Deloitte or PwC. They already have full-time offers. Um, I'm still a bit lost. I don't know what I'm doing. I also need a visa. I realized that now you know I would became more clear on my visa options and also you know Sergio is very responsible because you don't have any chance to fail your degree. Uh, you have to get good grades in order to secure a proper overall mark. So I also got a few more part-time jobs at university. I was also a translator for one of the social networks or manager for one of the social networks. I was doing random translating jobs and I also was international student caller, which is like I had to call prospective students and explain them about university. So my part-time work was quite busy in some ways. Uh, and I also became a president of Russian society, but it was a big opportunity. So it was amazing fun. I had to take responsibility of many events, of budgets, of different extracurricular things we were doing. So um, I was really busy. 
obviously I had to study for my course and I was applying to jobs very heavily. I'm talking like application a day in most days, obviously not every day, but I think overall, and I've talked about it before, I applied to around 60 companies. But this is not all at the same time. At first I started applying and I was doing pretty much the same thing as in year two, but I uh, had a better CV because I had all this extra stuff and I obviously realized that my CV needed improvement. But I was still applying for kind of front office jobs, maybe numerical jobs, and I didn't really evaluate my strengths. But then again, I was getting rejections, no interviews, and I was like, okay, I need to sit down and think, what am I doing wrong? And I realized now it was a really important step. I evaluated my strengths, I evaluated what I'm good at, I evaluated which kind of job I actually want to get, not what people are getting and what is popular. I realized I have people skills, I enjoy communicating, I enjoy problem solving, and kind of human resources felt like a good option. I read more about what kind of departments they have in human resources, what this department does, and I realized actually I could be really good at this position. So this is really important step when I realized uh, where my skills were and where my strengths were. And I include this uh, step in my coaching package because I think that it's really important for a prospective professional student to understand where uh, he or she would succeed and where or he or she would um, perform well in an interview. I revelated my strengths, I started applying for human resources roles and I also adapted my CV to human resources roles. And surprise, surprise, I get my first interview with the Lloyds Banking Group for HR graduate scheme. I was really happy because it was my, my first interview for this type of position. Um, it was a phone interview. I prepared so, so much. I prepared all the possible questions. I had scripts written, I had notes all over my room. And uh, I was really proud of myself that I took the time to prepare. I go on the phone, it goes really well. I think that it is, you know, my best interview ever and I answered really hard questions and then I get an email in about 20 to 30 minutes saying that I'm sorry we're not going to proceed with your application and I was devastated I really didn't know where it went wrong I was so upset it was only around December January time and I knew I still have a chance but I spoke to my parents and they said Frankly, Valeria, you're not going to get a job. No one wants you here. UK is very competitive. You need a visa. Just return back home. It's not a big deal. Uh, and so on, so on. Obviously, they were worried for me and they realized it is really hard, but it is not impossible. And I told them that I still want to try. And my parents said, well, actually, uh, we think you should do a master's course. You only studied for three years in my country. You know, bachelor's course is like five years. They think I don't have enough education and they really supported me to do a master's. And I applied to UCL and other universities, even Nottingham, my home university, as I call it. And I decided to move to London to pursue a master's at UCL. The course I accepted was International Public Policy and I was super excited, but I still realized I need to continue with my job search. I was applying for a mix of graduate schemes and internships in HR and around that time, I think in February, I get uh, invited to an interview at JP Morgan. I was so excited, but I had to go to London for an assessment center and uh, it was my first time going into any kind of office in the UK, yet alone an uh, investment bank um, office at Canary Wharf. And I prepared so much. I studied everything I could about the company. I studied everything about uh, HR and how human resources functions work at uh, investment banks. Then I studied possible interview questions and practice with my friends. I um, remembered uh, different facts about the company and the London office. Um, I tried different outfits to try to choose the best one. You know, I, it was a really big deal for me and I'm not going to lie that I just got lucky or I, uh, you know, won it by chance. I really prepared a lot and I still believe in, to prepare, in preparation and for all my clients, I really think that if they want to succeed, the more they practice and prepare, the better. So I went to London, I had my interview, it was a long, long day with a lot of stages and um, I did really well in some parts, but in one part I didn't do that well. And I'll tell you honestly, I had very mixed feelings going home after my interview. 
Why is that? Well, I did really well in some parts of assessments. I felt very confident. I felt like I really um, had a good connection and I answered all the questions well or all the you know tasks. But I also realized that I have weaknesses. For example, I'm quite shy when it comes to group conversations. I am shy to contribute sometimes. I am not that confident at public speaking back then. So um, I knew that it is not a definite yes. And I also knew that uh, I love the company and I love the people and I love the process. And that was really sad because I, I really understood that this company has great culture. The professionals I met were all amazing. And I was just really, really hoping for a positive outcome. So, as you know, um, as I spooled in the beginning of the video, I actually got the offer after a few days. I was super, super excited. And obviously I accepted it, but it was just an internship. It was an offer for a summer internship um, that summer. And it didn't mean that I got a permanent job. It didn't mean that, you know, I'm going to get a visa sponsorship, but it means that I am one step closer. So in that summer, my final year of university, I've done my exams, I got my results, I had a 2-1. Then uh, I packed all my stuff and moved to London. And I started my internship in JP Morgan, in Human Resources, and it was in the HR Risk team. And I'll tell you honestly, I found it very difficult. It's not that the role was difficult or what I had to do was particularly difficult. I was just not prepared. I never worked in the office before, except you know my home country, which was way more laid back compared to um, investment banking culture. I also wasn't that familiar with different systems. Even Excel, I was kind of rusty. I didn't know many communication styles or maybe uh, different abbreviations they had in the bank and it was just you know every day was uh, very stressful for me because I didn't know how to behave I didn't know how to dress I didn't know what uh, uh, when to joke when not to joke you know it, maybe I'm just not a confident person but it was a new corporate environment and for me it was stressful and challenging but I took it day by day my team was super nice they were so supportive they really really helped me get more confident and improve and also there were a lot of events going on outside my role different talks and um, presentation and it was really a lot going on and it was so well organized and honestly one of the best experiences in my life I can't believe you know that I still got this opportunity it was just so exciting so by the end of my internship by the end of 10 weeks my manager had a talk with me and he said that actually they like my performance and they like me wow thank you and they're going to make me an offer for a permanent position after one year and um, I was so happy because uh, I really enjoyed my 10 weeks I really tried hard and I'm still so grateful for my team that really supported me and decided that I'm worthy of a permanent job. I still had plans to do my master's, but uh, I knew that by the time I finish my master's, I don't have to worry about looking for a job. I will just come back in one year as a full-time employee uh, in HR graduate scheme at JP Morgan. And also I talked to each other, they said that the visa sponsorship is not a problem, they will sponsor me. And when I was about to finish my master's, I got um, contact from a lawyer and they've done everything for me and it was really amazing service. I just got a permanent visa without any problems. Permanent visa, I mean skilled worker visa. You know, the rest is history. As you know, I worked there for a few years. I finished my graduate scheme. And by the end of my graduate scheme, I got promoted to an associate level. And um, I just have to say, really, I don't know where I would have been without that opportunity because it was such a great few years of my life because people were so, so kind and supportive. I had amazing managers throughout the whole time and they really cared about my development. They cared about my... Um, professional growth, they cared about improving my skills and helping me succeed and I really learned a lot from them and from other team members. So my overall experience is very, very positive. What I want to share with you is probably if you want to ask me, Valeria, what does it take to get a job in the UK or what does it take to get a job as an international student that needs a visa? I'll tell you one thing, it takes hard work and dedication. There is no magic answer to that. You know, I um, still think that, you know, obviously I got lucky and uh, in some way and um, I was chosen by the people, but I did put a lot of 
effort and hard work into getting there. As you can see, it was a long-term plan. I started thinking about it you know, from year one arriving in the UK. I started thinking about my profile, how to, uh, can I improve my skills, how can I grow as a professional. I started thinking where I could uh, sell my strengths. I was preparing a lot for interviews. I was applying so, so much. And I think that is the reason why I was able to succeed. But obviously everyone has their own journey, which is just my personal story. And if you have any questions about it, you can let me know in the comments. And I do hope that this kind of gave you a bit of a better understanding of my background and how I got my first uh, permanent job in the UK. I want to invite you personally to a free webinar that I'm hosting. It is a free talk on how to get a job in the UK as an international student nowadays. And I do hope that you'll check it out. You can go to mindthegrad.com slash webinar and register. It is completely free and I will be talking live to you guys and answering your questions as well as sharing my materials. As always, thank you so much for watching and the best of luck from Mind the Grad. Bye.